If you sell solutions to businesses, then you know how difficult it can be to engage business owners. There's a lot of noise out there. Why are you the right choice? At Vendasta, we believe the best way to cut through the noise is by telling a powerful story, because the best story wins. Having the best products and services isn't enough. If you don't have a story that compels your customers, that gets to the heart of their needs, you won't win in a crowded marketplace. Stories are 22 times more memorable than facts and figures alone. Our neural activity increases five times when listening to a story. And we want your customers to truly feel part of your story. That's exactly what I'm here to share with you today. A powerful story that you can use to sell digital solutions to businesses that follows a scientific framework proven to help you close more deals. Introducing your million dollar pitch deck for selling digital. And it's truly yours. We've created this deck in Google Slides so you can easily copy and customize it, add your company logo, and start using it in sales conversations right away. This sales deck follows a proven methodology developed by Tim Reister from Corporate Visions. We had the pleasure of having Tim speak at our live Conquer Local conference and on the Conquer Local podcast in the past. One of the biggest takeaways he's shared with us is that customers don't need to be told why to do something. They need to be told why they need to change and why they need to do it now. The status quo bias is our biggest challenge in sales, not our competitors. The presentation I'm going to share with you is adapted from the Corporate Vision's Why Change framework, and it follows four key pillars. First, destabilize the prospect's preference by introducing an unconsidered need. Utilize loss aversion theory, demonstrating the cost of staying the same by showing their current state is risky. Then, communicate value by showing a clear contrast between the current and future states. And finally, defeat anticipated regret with a hero story. My good friend Shay is going to take you through the presentation. Now, let's pretend you're a business owner, and Shay works for an agency called Mountain Media. See if you can spot those four key pillars while he's presenting. Once he's done, I'll meet you right back here and we'll recap everything he's covered. All right, take it away, Shay. Thanks for meeting with me today. I hope you don't mind giving me a few minutes to do this presentation for you. We do this for all of our clients to make sure we are on the same page before we start looking at specific opportunities for growth. My name is Shay, and I've been working with Mountain Media for six and a half years I started my career as a geologist, but I made that switch to mountain media a while back, and I'm glad I did. Like I mentioned, we're going to spend the first couple of minutes talking about the digital marketing landscape and then dive further into what mountain media specializes in and your specific needs. Then at the end, I would love to spend some time discussing what our next steps are in working together. This presentation should only take around 10 to 15 minutes. I want to start by highlighting one of the guiding principles in our work here at Mountain Media. Not only is local business important, but local business is more important than ever. Local business help propel the local economy, provide trusted experts for common needs, and create vibrant communities where we live, work, and play. We aren't the only people that think this either. 82% of shoppers said they would rather support a local business when making a purchase. That being said, lately we've seen a need for local businesses to implement a comprehensive digital marketing strategy to work with those customers who want to support local businesses. The best local businesses are working hard on raising brand awareness so that customers are aware of their business and the unique value that they can provide, improving their searchability so customers can find their business when they want to make a purchase, and creating trust so that customers feel comfortable in making a purchase when they are ready. Unfortunately, many local businesses are not able to juggle all of the responsibilities of a digital marketing strategy to execute it effectively. They are not able to build brand awareness and stay top of mind for the majority of customers who want to buy from a brand that they know. They are not optimized for local search and miss out on the massive opportunity presented by high intent customers making local searches. And based on scattered bad reviews across the internet, 
They don't appear trustworthy and make nearly 90% of consumers who read reviews second guess making a purchase. So I'm curious to know, do these three problems sound familiar to you? If these three problems aren't solved, what's the potential cost to your business? Thank you for sharing. Let me show you how I think we can help your business out. We've learned that understanding the customer journey and building a strategy while looking at it holistically is much more effective than if we focus on any of the individual marketing channels in isolation. You can segment out the steps a customer takes when making a purchase into five stages. Awareness, when interest for your service are generated. Findability, when your business gets found and stands out due to its visibility. Reputation, when your business gets chosen by the customer based on their trust of you. Conversion, when you and your customers agree on the sale and advocacy when your business gets talked about based on a customer's experience. As you go further down the funnel, there are less customers in each stage at any one time, and some drop out completely. We wanna keep as many customers in the funnel as possible. And there are a lot of ways these stages of the customer journey can be influenced by you as a business owner, so your customers move closer to the sale. It's important to recognize the customer journey doesn't end after the sale either. For example, a future decision might be impacted by the story of one customer's experience on a review site. In fact, it may be worthwhile to think of the customer journey as circular. Customers still move through all the stages of the journey, but it helps us remember that something further down the funnel has an impact on our future customers and will continue to have an impact. For example, what if someone had a bad experience buying from you and leaves a nasty review? When I need to hire someone to remodel my bathroom, am I going to choose business A that spent a lot of money on advertising their services and is the first Google result, but has a number of bad reviews where they caused a plumbing leak? Of course not. Even worse, instead of driving down the street to meet with another contractor, I just need to slide my finger down my phone screen and hire business B because they have better reviews. Business A spent a bunch of time and money at the top of the funnel only to send a customer to their competitor. This is the danger of not having a comprehensive strategy. With all this in mind, I've prepared a digital needs assessment for us to look at and see how we're performing across the various stages of the customer journey. Why don't we take a minute to look at this together? Ah, interesting. It appears that your business could be doing better in a couple of key areas. Online reviews, presence and accuracy on important sites, and your social media. Let's take a look at how that impacts your findability on local search. Hmm. Looks like you're not appearing as high up on Google search results as you could be. And that's a big problem. To be the first thing your customer sees when they search, you need to rank in the local pack. It has prime web page real estate and is often used when someone is looking for something nearby. The biggest contributor is having a well filled out Google business profile. But there are a lot of other factors that you can help control. Just underneath the local pack are local organic links. Organic links still account for a significant portion of clicks, but only if you are one of the top three results. So you need to rank near the top. While the breakdown of how you rank in the local pack is different from local organic, the factors are still the same, so there is a lot under your control. While there are always opportunities to improve our online presence, based on the results we saw, I believe the most impactful ways to keep customers from leaving our customer journey today is winning search through online listings and citations, winning research through relevant, frequent, and positive reviews, and winning your customers back in through customer engagement via social, email, and other retention and growth tools. When you implement a broad-based strategy like this, it can be hard knowing what to look at to confirm if things are working as they should. 
People generally don't tell you exactly why they came to your store. And they might not even know when they first became aware of you. We found there are a number of data points, such as search types on Google listings, citations across the internet, and review scores over time that are best viewed in tandem to understand how they affect each other. We collect and collate all this data in an executive summary to spot trends over time to help get a fuller picture of the effect on the customer journey. For most local businesses, taking care of all these elements is a lot of work, particularly because they don't have an expert in digital marketing on their staff or the budget to hire a dedicated staff member. This results in a lot of pain as staff juggle their regular work duties and it's unclear whether their work is positively affecting business. When you work with us, we are committed to helping you grow your business and providing you all the information needed to see where there are growth opportunities. The added benefit of this is you and your employee can stay focused on what you do best, knowing there is an expert taking care of the rest. We've seen working with us results in nearly three times revenue growth, drastically changing how a business operates. Here's an example of a fantastic opportunity available through a comprehensive digital marketing strategy. We worked with an independent family law firm that wanted to stand out from the multi-location firms in their area and drive local business. After implementing our strategy, they eventually had 50 new clients in a 30-day window that could be attributed to our work. That resulted in roughly $40,000 of attributed revenue a 1,742% return on their investment. So how about we take a look at a proposal I put together to show you exactly what I'm suggesting and the ROI you will receive. So, what do you think? Shay's a fantastic salesperson, which always helps a deck pop, but if you keep the framework I mentioned in mind, you might have seen some of what helps make that presentation convincing. Let's review the presentation pillar by pillar. The first three slides of the presentation are standard enough that they are kind of like step zero in this framework. But the agenda slide is important enough that we need to highlight it. Because we are using a storytelling approach in our presentation, it's important to make sure our customers aren't caught off guard and wondering when we're actually going to start presenting to them. The first thing we do is introduce our point of view to the customer. It doesn't need to be revolutionary, but it does need to be true because it's laying the groundwork for the rest of this presentation. We're preparing our customers to be destabilized and taking the time to set us up as a trustworthy solution for their unconsidered need. In this case, our customer likely knows that doing some aspects of digital marketing is important, and they might even have tried to handle multiple aspects of digital marketing themselves. But they probably haven't thought about having a holistic digital marketing strategy. That's this deck's unconsidered need. The next two slides move right to the framework's second pillar, loss aversion theory. This tells us that the pain of losing $10 is greater than the pleasure of gaining $10. So we're showing them how painful it would be not to take action on the unconsidered need we just introduced. It's important that we take a moment to two-way communicate with the customer here. It not only shows that we're here to have a conversation, but it also makes the customer quantify the problem themselves and gives you the opportunity to adjust your presentation going forward. How much is a customer worth to you is one of our favorites to start adding some math to the discussion. Before we get to the third pillar of our framework, we spend a fair amount of time building up trust with our customers by sharing our knowledge and expertise. We're demonstrating why we are the people to help solve the problem before we demonstrate our solution. In this case, we're gonna tell our customer about the customer journey, all while hammering home that businesses need to have a comprehensive digital marketing strategy. We're still using loss aversion bias to our advantage by highlighting that not only does the customer lose out on business, but all of their advertising money was spent marketing for their competitor. That is a painful double whammy. If this doesn't speak to your customers, you can go ahead and share knowledge that you know is valuable, but just make sure it's digestible and ties back to the unconsidered need like we did here. All right, now that we've created enough pain and built up enough trust, we can move on to our third pillar, 
communicating value by contrasting our prospect's present state with a future state where they follow our expert advice. We show them our solution, some examples of what winning might look like, and then ask our prospects straight up. Would a future state where your unconsidered need is solved be better than now? It should be pretty obvious for the prospect that the answer is yes. Finally, before our prospect can start anticipating any regret, we move on to the fourth pillar of our deck and show them a hero story they can imagine themselves in. Mixing in numbers, graphs, and any visuals here is extremely effective as long as we use them to tell a story for our prospects. Choose a successful example of your work for your best results. And just like that, we're at the end of this deck. Now is a great time to walk the prospect through a proposal, but there are a lot of other options available depending on how ready your prospect is to buy. The important thing is that you've got your customer thinking about something that they hadn't before and how much they don't wanna miss out on fixing that problem with you. We'll be sharing this deck with you in the chat and post event so you can make a copy to use yourself or use it as a starting point for your own custom deck. We've included a couple of extra slides too that you can work in if it fits your story and sales process better. Now that you're armed with this framework, you are in a great position to win new business and new clients in no time.